Hello, South Dakota Symphony fans. This is Thomas Fortner, assistant conductor, reporting from the balcony of the Goss Opera House in Watertown, South Dakota. Brand new, renovated place. Really beautiful, as you can see. Um, and we are preparing for our first performance of the season, um, the Brandenburg Concerto. When we think of Bach, we often think of almost a godlike figure, perhaps the greatest musician to ever live. He wrote an incredible amount of music with incredible high quality and almost seemed to never draft music. It just came flowing out of his mind. Despite this genius, we have to remember that Bach was a real human being, flesh and blood like any one of us. And he suffered loss and tragedy and experienced emotion. Bach had 20 children, but only 10 of them survived. The young Johann Sebastian Bach was quite a truant uh, when he first started going to school. He was absent quite a lot and his grades were very low. Bach was orphaned at the age of nine. Another example of Bach's personality was a story about when he got in a sword fight with the bassoon player over a disagreement about a part. This picture is a reconstruction of Bach's head that was recently done. And this is where Bach lived when he was writing the Brandenburg Concerti. The six Brandenburg Concerti that we'll be playing this week are remarkable for lots of reasons, but one of them is the instrumentation. This is something you don't typically see with a standard orchestra because the standard orchestra hadn't been invented yet. For example, the final, number six, features no violins. It's only violas, viola da gambas, which are an instrument we don't really see in an orchestra, cello and bass and continuum. Thanks to Nicholas McGagan, the great conductor of early music and a real expert on the history of composers of this era for providing me with these pictures and commentary.